name is Sophie. I work here and I love dinosaurs. Does anyone here like dinosaurs? Does anyone here love dinosaurs? <laughs> Alright. Well, then we have something special in store for you guys. Because today, we're going to talk a little bit about and maybe even see a small part of the dinosaur story. Now, this is a story that is so grand, so huge, it's hard to even conceptualize and imagine. This is a story about survival. Survival through the harshest conditions of weather we can possibly imagine. This is a story of survival during the movement and the formation of the continents that we live on today. This is a story of plant eaters and meat eaters battling to rule the land. And finally, it's a story of extinction. And yet again, survival in the form of birds which might actually be living dinosaurs. We'll get back to that later. Now, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when, when I think of the dinosaurs, I think of these big, grand, uh, cool images of them that we see in these big Hollywood movies like Jurassic Park, or those cool computer animated documentaries on TV. But what I think is so amazing about the dinosaurs is that they represent how the pure natural forces of evolution can allow an order of animals to live and survive on this planet for 165 million years. That's how long the dinosaurs lived on the planet. And maybe they're even still alive today in the form of birds. That is amazing. This is a story of evolution that goes hand in hand with the evolution of plants. It goes hand in hand even with the evolution of our own warm-blooded mammalian ancestors. So what do you guys say? How would you guys like to go back across vast stretches of geologic time into the deep realms of the past and visit this story of the dinosaurs? How would you guys like to do that? Yeah. Right. But, but wait a second, guys. Wait, before we write the story of the dinosaur, we need to look at some evidence, right? We need some hard scientific evidence to tell the dinosaur story. What kind of evidence, what kinds of things did the dinosaurs leave behind us to study? Fossils! I heard someone scream out. Is that what you're going to say in the back? Fossils? Yeah, exactly. If you look behind me, we find fossils of dinosaur bones. And if we're lucky enough, we find enough bones to put together and make a skeleton so we know how dinosaurs look, or maybe even how they move. We find other fossils too, other remains we've done. For instance, this is a pretty neat fossil. This is an impression of dinosaur skin. Sometimes we even find dinosaur skin fossils. So we know they had scales, a lot like lizards do today. But even birds, if anyone here has ever seen a chicken foot, you know that chickens have scales too. And then we find fossils like this one. Can you guys take a guess what this might be? An egg! Yeah, we find dinosaur eggs, so we know they laid eggs, like birds do today. If you can imagine a, a dinosaur walking around in the mud, leaving something behind them. Footprints! Yeah, we find footprints. Those are great fossils to find also. And we even find fossils like this one. This is a real 70 million year old fossil. Genuine dinosaur poop. <laughs> we even find fossils of dinosaur poop. We call it coprolite. <laughs> and these are important fossils because they can tell us what the dinosaurs ate, for instance. So, once we get all those fossils and put them together, we can start writing the dinosaur story. But one thing we realize is there are way too many fossils that span way too long a time to cover in just this one little 15 minute session. So what do you guys say we go straight to the heights of dinosauria? Straight to the time when some of the largest animals to ever walk the earth would make their debut. This is the same time when plants 
first about the ability to grow flowers. So it was the first time that insects had wings and could fly around to pollinate the flowers. This is the same time when right down the center of the United States, there was a huge ocean that divided it in two. This is the same time that a huge asteroid would come down and strike the Earth, giving the dinosaurs their ultimate test of survival. I'm talking about the late Cretaceous, about 65 million years ago. This is the time when one of the largest meat eaters to ever walk the Earth would break. It is the ultimate example of how 165 million years of evolution can lead to an animal fit to rule the land. And this dinosaur did rule the land. And that's why they named him Rex. Which means the king. Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex is only 
T-Rex's teeth are gonna grow to be huge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to remind myself to keep my distance. <laughs> and these weren't just ordinary teeth. They weren't thin, like the teeth on a saber-toothed cat. They were big, thick teeth, which means they were strong. Which means when a T-Rex bit, he could crush through bone. T-Rex's bite was so strong that when he bit down, he could bite with a force of 15,000 pounds per square inch. That's the strongest bite that we know of in the history of life on Earth. Amazing. Now, there's something else about his mouth that's pretty cool. It has to do with this curve that you might see right there. That curve was important in his mouth, too. I wish I had something you could bite down into to show you guys really how that curve works. Anyone want to volunteer to have a bite down to you guys? No. Okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I think, I'll, I'll just in case we have to do T-Rex, have this stick right here. Maybe if he gets interested, I can get him to bite into this. Let's see. He's sniffing it. He looks oh. <laughs> He's definitely interested. All right, let me get him a little closer. Okay. <laughs> not so sure about this anymore. Okay. What do you guys think? Maybe one more bite? <laughs> oh, <I'm all> <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let me get it in so I can show you the curve. Okay. Now, while he's biting, do you see how this curve kind of goes up? And then down again? Because of that curve in his mouth, he could bite into more meat in one single bite. For instance, an adult Tyrannosaurus Rex could bite up to 500 pounds of meat in just one bite. Can you? Oh, hey, oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. I wasn't done talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? 500 pounds of meat in just one bite. That is amazing. <laughs> That's why this dinosaur was named the king of the tyrant lizard. Oh, it looks like he found our other T-Rex fossil. Oh, I wonder what he's thinking. Oh. <laughs> you guys, I... I think, I think you might miss his family back in the late Cretaceous. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should we send him home now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, guys, so let's all say goodbye and, and thank you to our team. Oh, please. Dinosaurs today. 
So the story of the dinosaurs continues. And maybe you guys can help to fill in the gaps of the dinosaur story. The parts that we don't know. Like, Thank you guys for coming to our dinosaur encounter program.